Hi everyone, this is Sharon here. Welcome to my channel. Today in this video, we are going to see a simple implementation of clustering algorithm using k-means. So let's get into the topic and then see how to implement an k-means algorithm. So as you see in my stream, so what we are going to do is we are going to first go through a simple implementation of k-means algorithm using an inbuilt data set and like by passing a small subset of data. And then what we are going to do is we are going to see how to implement k-means algorithm for a real data set that has been downloaded from Tidal. So first, let's see the simple example. So first, in order to implement the k-means algorithm, what we need to do is we need to import k-means, which is part of the stllearn.cluster package. So what I will do is uh, first, let me just clear the output and uh, let me execute this particular uh, cell here in order to import all the packages that is required for today's exercise. So then what I am doing is I'm going to create a simple data set which has weight as well as height. So we are going to make use of this particular data set and we are going to come up with the clusters. So let me read this uh, NumPy array which has the weight as well as height for uh, different sets of people. And then what we are going to do is as it's explained in the concept video, right in the concept video of uh, clustering algorithm. So what we are going to do is we are going to make use of the elbow method in order to identify the right number of clusters for this particular problem. So this is the implementation of the elbow method. So what we are trying to do is here for k in range of uh, at 1 to 5. So this can this upper limit and go on till the number of data points. So here in this case, I guess we approximately have about 10 data points, but I'm going to stop at 5. And we are going to see for each clusters, how much is the distortion. So as the number of clusters increases, the distortion would reduce. And we want to identify exactly the point where there is an elbow, which would be which would be the ideal number of clusters. So let me execute this and then show you exactly what I am meaning. So as you see here, so what happens is when we have one cluster, the distortion is very high. The error is quite high. So when the number of clusters is two, the error has reduced drastically. And as we proceed, the error still reduces. When the number of clusters is equal to the number of data point, the error would be zero. So here in this graph, what we are going to see is we are going to see the point where there is a sharp turn. So for example, like this is the elbow from this particular chart. So this is the ideal number of clusters. So here, for this example, the data set has two clusters. So what we are going to do is we are going to uh, plot this particular data point. So these are all the various data points. So now we are going to group them into different clusters. So here we use k-means and then we pass the number of clusters as two, and then we are setting the maximum iteration as 100. So Maximum iteration is the number of iteration that it needs to draw on until it finds the uh, the right cluster. So if it is not able to converge, what it will do is it will stop at 100 iteration to ensure that it doesn't draw on an infinite loop. So now let me uh, execute this and build the k-means algorithm. So now the k-means algorithm has been built. So this is used in order to identify the centroids. So we are going to see the two centroids so these are the two centroid points and we want to see the actual output. So these are all the very, uh, these are all the actual outputs, the various uh, clusters to which the data points belong to. So what we have is we have uh, five, uh, 11 data points. So for each of these uh, 11 data points, we have a cluster. So it's either zero or one. So now let's plot the actual clusters and then see the data point. So as you see, there are two different clusters. So this is considered as a particular cluster and this is considered as a, the other cluster. And if we print or if we uh, use the centroid in this particular chart, so as you see this point here is the centroid for this cluster and this point here is the centroid for this cluster. So this is a simple example where we are implementing k-means algorithm for a smaller subset of data. What we are going to do is we are going to see pick up this implementation and implement on a real title data set to see what happens. So moving on to the next one. So what happens is I'm going to import all the packages that is required. So apart from k-means, we use NumPy, Pandas library, because the data set is in a CSV and we are also going to make use of uh, matplot as well as Seaborn to make some uh, visualizations. So let me execute and import all these packages. So now all these packages have been imported. So now let me read the data set. 
So this is how the data set would look like. So these are all the various customers. We have a gender, age, annual income, as well as the spending store. So first what we are going to do is we are going to pick up two attributes. We are going to pick up age as well as spending store. And then we are going to see if we can come up with different clusters. So now, as explained previously, I'm going to make use of uh, uh, the elbow method in order to identify the ideal number of clusters. So let use let's use the same script that we used in, in this in this simple example so the same script that we used in order to identify the ideal value for k so now uh, i'm going to execute this so as you see here so this is the elbow chart for the data set so so what we can do is we can uh, choose uh, two where uh, it appears to be the right point like looks like the elbow point here so for time being, let's ignore this particular portion here, as you see on my screen. So what we are doing is we are going to plot the floor clustering, like we are going to plot the age as well as the spending store. So what we are doing is we are plotting this particular scatter plot, and this is how the scatter plot would appear for age as well as the spending store. And then what we are trying to do is we are going to build the k-means algorithm. So we are going to say there are two clusters here. So let me execute this and finally we are going to find the centroids and these are all the various uh, various uh, uh, cluster mapping for all the data points and then I'm going to plot this data plot like I'm going to plot the various clusters. So these are all the various clusters for uh, the data set that we have which is age as well as the spending store. and. Uh, and finally, what we are going to do is we are going to get the centroids for each of these clusters. So as you see, these dots are the centroid for those two clusters. And finally, what we are going to do is we are just going to pick up the age, the spending store, and then the label in order to see if there is any distinctive pattern. So let me just pick up all these ones. Let me just print those values and what we are going to do is we are going to use and instead of plot and then see how the actual values are being grouped into different clusters so if you see this is the spending store which is ranges from 0 to 100 and this is the age of the particular customer so what we are able to see is we are able to see those with the spending store maybe over 40 are grouped into this particular cluster and the others are grouped into this particular cluster here. So what we can do is now, maybe instead of two clusters, what we can try is we can try with three clusters and then see what's happening here. Uh, so let me execute this and uh, let's get the centroid for uh, all those three clusters. Let's get the cluster mapping. So this is how the cluster mapping. So now we have three categories, zero, one, as well as two. And then now let's just print uh, the different clusters here so now we can see there are three different clusters and uh, let's see the centroid for all those clusters so these are all the three centroids for those clusters so now what we are going to do is we are going to uh, we are going to print uh, the data points on the actual attributes the age as well as the spending store to see what happens so now uh, let's use the startup plot here and then uh, we can clearly see that uh, the the customers are grouped into three different clusters like those spending store like below 25 into one cluster between 25 and 60 into other cluster and on the top the people who have spending store over 60. so the clustering algorithm helps us to group the data points in different categories based on the various patterns so for example here when we use age as well as spending store it becomes clear that uh, the spending store becomes a critical attribute in order to group them into different categories. So that is the purpose of clustering algorithm. If you have a data set and if, that if your data set is not labeled and uh, you want to identify the different groups or different categories within the data set, what you can do is you can make use of clustering algorithm in order to come up with the different categories. And that is it for now. I hope you have learned something new today in this video. What I will do is I will also provide you some links in order to learn more about the k-means algorithm and the clustering algorithm in general so that you can refer to those links and learn, learn in detail about these techniques. And what you can do is you can try to implement k-means algorithm on a different data set and then see what happens. So that is it for now. I hope you have learned something new and bye for now. See you in the next session. Bye.